Well, well, well. <laughs> Welcome to my brief Diablo 4 lore video. It's only gonna cover the main highlights, basically get you ready to play Diablo 4. If you've never played any Diablo games or if you haven't really paid attention to the lore, this is gonna get you ready for what you need to know for Diablo 4. The rest of the Diablo universe I'll cover in another video. This is just, I wanna play Diablo 4, what do I need to know? Um, the uh, info that I'm getting is from the Diablo archive fandom, as well as my own playing experience and uh, Wikipedia, a couple places like that. Um, but it should be enough to get you going. It's going to contain some inaccuracies, some things I've seen are getting retconned. Um, there's some ambiguities in the stories. So if some things don't line up perfectly, don't worry about it. This, the main story literally has time travel -y, wibbly wobbly bullshit to kind of explain away whoopsie daisies. So listen, we're all just having fun with the story. This is just to get you on board so you know what's happening. Ignore the little inaccuracies. I think the first thing that's important to know are the prime evils. They are the three lords of hell, the biggest, baddest demons. You're gonna wanna know their names. The first one, easy to remember, it's Diablo. He's the Lord of Terror. He's the face on the cover of all the games. He's the big hulking red demon man. He's the namesake of the franchise. He is one of the prime evils. He is the Lord of Terror. His brothers are Mephisto, who's the Lord of Hatred, and Baal, who's the Lord of Destruction. Um, and if you know the prime evils, it's really worth it to know the Angiris Council, which is basically heaven's version of that. The biggest, baddest angels that heaven has. There's a lot of them there. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be important to know them all, but I'll hit the ones that I think are going to be the most important to know. The first one is Tyrael. He's the aspect of justice. He's very pro-human, very pro-Nephilim. He's very much a good guy. He's on our side. He even gave up his divinity once to help humans out. So he's a good one, and uh, I think we're probably going to see some Tyrael-related stuff in Diablo 4. Uh, another uh, angel that I think is worth knowing the name of is Imperius. He's the aspect of valor, and he is not quite so pro-human. Um, he has found humans irritating, annoying, frustrating, the cause of problems, and on a couple accounts has voted for the wholesale destruction of the entire species. So he's decidedly less pro-human than uh, uh, Tyrael is. And the other name that you definitely need to know from the Angiris Council is Inarius because he is one of the absolute main, main characters of Diablo 4, and honestly, fundamental characters to the Diablo lore universe. Um, uh, he's not on the Angiris Council anymore, uh, and that's kind of honestly where the story starts, because way, way back when, before all the Diablo games and before all the everything, the only thing that existed was heaven and hell, and the only thing that they did was fight. That's it. There's nothing else, just heaven and hell kicking each other's asses. Um, it's called the Eternal Conflict, which basically sums up everything you need to know about that. Unsurprisingly, uh, some people were uh, sick of the Eternal Conflict after infinity time. And so Inarius from the Angiris Council and Lilith, who is Mephisto's daughter, Mephisto, one of the prime evils, but Lilith and Inarius, they got together and they're like, I'm sick of this. This sucks. Eternal conflict is the worst. Let's make our own little side pocket universe where we can just get away from the eternal conflict. And so they created a place called Sanctuary. Sanctuary from the eternal conflict. Uh, but, you know, making a little side area is all well and good, but uh, they had to hide it so that heaven and hell didn't, you know, use it as a battleground. And so they stole a thing called the World Stone to hide um, the to hide sanctuary from everyone else. And uh, they did it, and it was great. And uh, they ended up having some crazy angel demon sex, and they had a bunch of babies. And the babies were known as the Nephilim. And it turned out that the Nephilim, the babies of an angel, Inarius, and a demon, Lilith, uh, had the capacity to be more powerful than angels and demons. They were the single most powerful being ever. 
And uh, Lilith and Inarius had two very decidedly different reactions to the creation of the Nephilim. Uh, Lilith said, hey, we gave birth to the strongest beings in the universe. Let's use them as weapons to kill uh, heaven and hell and just uh, be done with the eternal conflict. Uh, Inarius, on the other hand, said uh, they're so strong that if they rebel against us, they would kill us and there's nothing we can do about it. So we have to end them now. And they technically could because that big world stone that was hiding sanctuary also suppressed the Nephilim's abilities, prevented them from being as strong as they could get. And so it was feasible to kill them. So Lilith and Inarius fought over what to do with their babies and Inarius ended up winning. He banished Lilith to the void and killed almost all of the Nephilim. Not all, but basically all of them. The rest that were allowed to survive, um, you know, they procreated and that world stone uh, tamped down their power so much that eventually they just became humans. Humans are the offspring of Nephilim, which are the offspring of Lilith and Inarius. Um, the uh, big takeaway of a lot of the Diablo games, there's a lot that happens, but the one thing that you need to know is that the World Stone was destroyed at some point. And that means that Sanctuary is exposed to both Heaven and Hell, and there's nothing suppressing the Nephilim's power at this point. That's an important fact for everybody to know. And that basically brings us to the lore that you need to know for Diablo 4. Because the intro cinematic that we've all seen at all the release trailers is Lilith coming back. Lilith is being summoned back from the void. And uh, I, she seems pretty still on that whole pro-human, pro-Nephilim, let's build a weapon to kill the universe kind of thing. So she's very much in our corner, as long as, you know, we're okay with just killing everybody. Uh, and that's basically all you really need to know for the Diablo 4 prep. There you go. I'll make a longer video with some more stuff in it. But other than that, um, have fun, uh, you know, killing the demons and joining Lilith and probably killing some angels too.